Tihae Māori ora, ko wātou hui a te kingua, no peiti ki a hau. Wātou hui a recites his mihi with pride. Nā tātou re tiwi, ko pēn taku whā. Wātou spent two years learning about his whakapapa and finding his voice as an advocate for others living with intellectual disabilities. Mai. For speaking, it is important to me to get our voices heard and getting our again the voices heard of the, with a disability. He's proud, and rightly so. This is a young man who until recently had struggled to read and write. Well done. He could only really read, recognise words for the TV guide, Shortland Street, and things like that. And so we said, when, once you're involved with our, um, self-advocacy, you really got to read reports and speak up more. So then he started learning reports and reading, and he's just come ahead so well. Right, yo, yep. shall I get up to you first? I don't know. Oh, okay. Twenty-four-year-old Wata lives with Mum Pam and stepdad Barry on a dairy property in the Waikato. Morning, girls. Morning. He had planned to stay and work on the farm, but now he's got a taste for self-advocacy. He sees another future, where he's respected for his opinions nationally and maybe even internationally. So Mata started to take a big interest in it, and then he got to meet Robert Martin and different forums, and then he started to speak up and thinking, oh, people are listening, and and started to really take an interest in self-advocacy, and then he decided, yes, he might like to go further. Over to you, Robert. Robert Martin also has an intellectual disability. He's represented New Zealand at the United Nations. It took me a long time to gain the confidence to do the things I wanted to achieve in my own life. I had to fight for everything, just to be myself. Wata would love my to follow in his footsteps. Because he's a role model and, yeah, he's a role model to me. Mr Robert Martin of Wanganui. Like where he's come from, and then, like, I came from a small town and he came from an institute. He got me where I am. He told me to put my name forward, and I did, yeah. White is now on the National Self-Advocacy Advisory Committee. This is my old black posters. He makes regular trips to Wellington for meetings, and has managed to secure posters. autographs from These sports stars the in the process. Posters. Wow. Chief posters, Warriors posters and the All Black posters and the Chief poster up there. Wow, you're obviously a sports fan, yep. aren't you? Yes. So you've got a few of these people's autographs, haven't you? Yep, these are the ones I've met on the aeroplane. Oh, OK. Or at Wellington Airport. So there's a few All Blacks in there, is there? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ma'anunu, um, Daniel Carter. And um, you're not afraid to sort of go up to politicians nah. either, I hear. No. Nope. What happened with John Kay? I gave him to I gave him a call to action book, and I um I was hopping on my plane, and I tagged to my mate, and he finished off talking to him. Mhm. Mm what did you guys tell him? We told him about the issues around around the around IXC and the self advocacy thing. And what was his response? He'll read it. He'll see. He said, "Do I read it in the plane?" Oh, OK. And have you heard from him since? No, not no? yet. He hasn't rung you up to no. say this was really interesting? No. No? Today they're off to Willoughby Nursery in the Thames Valley, three quarters of an hour away. Wata works at the IHC facility three or four times a week, encouraging others to speak up about their rights and needs. People talking up, people bringing issues, people are growing and confident. People are standing out for themselves. White has experienced discrimination and ignorant attitudes himself. Many years ago, he wanted to play soccer. Everything seemed fine, and then the coach says, I'm not going to have him. one of those in our team. White was so upset, the person has said it in front of him, which I was really angry with. But we got him into a team and he really loved it. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Wata was involved in planting these trees nearly five years ago and they're now bearing fruit. 
He's put the same kind of dedication into his self-advocacy work and he's helped make some real change and improve the quality of people's lives. Where would people be if they weren't in amongst the community? In day services and doing probably just doing nothing much, just sitting around. And how would that make people feel? It was sad and it was boring. Why do you think it's important for people with intellectual disabilities to have jobs and to be in sports teams? Because you're, you're getting the clients into a sports team and you're getting a job, they be, they're out in the community and they just been in the community life. He speaks up, he works with his mates or his other self-advocate friends and speaks up for issues that worry them and like this call to action, wanting the government to realise that they've got to survive on a small benefit. He's very passionate about it, yes. Tell me how you've changed since you've been doing the self-advocacy. More confident, learning more experience to speaking up properly. What's the difference between when you first started doing meetings to now? First time I was nervous, I was like shy as, and now straight up dead talk and then straight down again. 